Good afternoon, everybody. Shavua Tov and welcome to the Israel Brief brought to you by Lay of the Land. I'm Raleen Marks, your host, bringing you the top stories from Israel and the Middle East every Monday to Thursday right here, as well as on YouTube if you prefer. That way you can watch them again and again and again. All you have to do is simply click on the big red subscribe button and you'll be notified every time we post a brief. To YouTube. But let's take a look at those top stories making headlines and I could not be more proud to announce the first story and that is that for Israelis the sky is not the limit. Earlier today President Rivlin announced that Israel would be sending its second ever astronaut into space. Former fighter pilot Eitan Stibbe will be the one that will be joining a delegation of astronauts and uh, will be visiting the International Space Station where he will be stationed for over a week. And what makes us super proud is that he will be proudly representing Israel with his blue and white flag embroidered on his flight suit. This is the second time an Israeli has gone into space. The first one was Ilan Ramon and we honor him and tragically he passed away when the Columbia spacecraft disintegrated when it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. And as uh, President Rivlin so poignantly said, and we echo his sentiments, that a day like today would not be complete without remembering Ilan Ramon, his wife Rona, who was very, very involved with the space program, and their son Asaf, who also passed away during uh, maneuvers as a fighter pilot. And we know that uh, Captain Eitan Stibbe will honor their memory and their blessing and uh, it just goes to show that Israel as tiny as it is is massive when it comes to its achievements and for us the universe beckons and this follows last year's sending of an unmanned spacecraft into outer space to hopefully land on the moon and while the landing didn't happen uh, as we uh, anticipated it was more of a crash landing it is still a massive achievement. In other news, Israeli officials are taking broadcaster CNN to task for comments made by well-known anchorwoman Christiane Amanpour. Last week on the eve of the anniversary of Kristallnacht, she made comparisons between the Trump administration and the Kristallnacht pogrom that happened on the 9th and the 10th of November 1938. Kristallnacht was a night where across Nazi-occupied countries such as Germany and Austria and the Sudetenland, people were encouraged to loot and boycott its uh, Jewish-owned stores, synagogues, schools, hospitals owned by Jews were destroyed and at least 30,000 men were rounded up and sent to concentration camps and many recognized Kristallnacht as the harbinger or the first major event that brought on the final solution and the Holocaust. And wherever you sit in the political spectrum, making a comparison between the Trump administration and Kristallnacht is absolutely appalling and officials are demanding an apology from the network. And uh, let's see if we get that, because in the last couple of days there has been no acknowledgement from Amanpour that her comments have seriously offended Jewish people and humanitarians all over the world, not to mention Holocaust survivors and the memory of those who perished during the Shoah. And other news, over the weekend news broke out that Israeli operatives were responsible for the assassination of Al-Qaeda's second-in-command, Abdullah Ahmad Abdullah, in Iran. And uh, Abdullah Ahmad Abdullah was known to be plotting, along with his daughter, the murder of Israelis and Jews around the world and was indicted formally in the United States for his role in the embassy bombings in Tanzania and Kenya, which is proof that if there's going to be a threat to Israel, we will always try and neutralize that threat. And in this case, we were successful. Those are your top stories making headlines, but don't forget to check out our website. And if you want news that's hot off the press from the Arab world and only on a lay of the land, you can find us at www.layoftheland.online or on our Facebook page at Lottle Site. 
If you haven't already, give us a like or a follow and share our content. It really helps to educate people about Israel and the Middle East when you do that. Uh, don't forget that you can find us on YouTube at The Israel Brief and interact with us on, tube, on Twitter rather at Lay of the Land with the digit 5. So with uh, today's headlines, I'm really Marks. This is the Israel Brief. We wish you a safe and healthy day. Stay safe wherever you are. And we'll chat again tomorrow.